So my name is Nick Farnhill. I'm the founder and CEO of Poke. Uh, Poke is a creative agency with, um, I suppose, our heart is very much digital and everything we do has a, a digital core to it. So the team here is, we're 13 years old, we're going to be, actually 13, our birthday is in um, a month's time, December the 6th, and we're around about 50 people, and we've been about that size, I would say, for the last four or five years, and it's a, it's a really nice size, it's sort of, it's not too small, you, you feel like you've got a good team there to do, to do the work you want to do, but it's equally not so big, and so the culture, the informality, the, um, the way that uh, everyone knows each other is, uh, is actually quite easy to, um, to maintain. Um, as I said, we're, we're a creative agency, and, um, but uh, digital is our, is our passion, and uh, I think a lot of the stuff that we, well, how we often talk about uh, the work we do is we get involved in defining, um, creating and designing unforgettable digital experiences and that's in a very broad context. The most important things recruiting people into our business well I mean obviously there's the role you're looking for and whatever level that is and um, so you know that the the skill they have the experience they have and the thing that I um, always look out for is honesty in people when they come to us and there's this tendency particularly when you're looking at CVs to um, not really understand exactly how a person has contributed to a piece of work they may be they may be referencing so you know this honesty about someone who can come in and really describe very clearly what their role whatever level whatever sort of um, uh, 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 amount of time they were they spent on that project but how they they talk about their particular input into that project and that always stands out and it may only be a, like a small part they played but in talking about that individual part and where it made a difference to that project I always look and so I always look for and so that's um, that's important when I'm um, talking to people and looking for people um, also looking in for people and what they do outside of their work and um, I often talk about the the last bit of a CV what's at the bottom the um, the extracurricular activities then you know it's not used very well that section and people talk about I go to the cinema, I like restaurants, I like reading. It's like, you know, of course, but what really switches you on? What do you get excited about? Are you learning something new? Are you um, uh, excited about something you're, just, you're deciding to explore? And often when you start to talk to someone about that subject, about that interest, a very natural conversation forms and you get a much better insight into that individual's character and... Um, just their, their approach to their work and their life and where they find inspiration. And I, I love that, particularly in second interviews. That can expose so much more about how that person may fit into the, the company here. <laughs> uh, incredibly, um, it varies between the type of roles that uh, people are in. I mean, we, I think all of us would probably be a certain sort of oddball uh, and quite ambidextrous in our, in our own backgrounds and our own interests and that's what uh, interests us in a lot of people who come to Poke and, uh, and work with us. Obviously you sort of index in slightly different ways, maybe um, working in the creative team but with an interest and um, a curiosity around what technology can, can offer uh, and you see those type of individuals moving you know a creative may or a designer particularly may move towards the dev team just just to ask questions just to understand what you could do and vice versa and i think we've tried to instill a few things here which promote that so every three to four months the entire studio flips and you don't know where you're going to sit but you're given a new place in the studio and you're going to be sitting next to two or three people who you may not get the opportunity to work with normally so you get to see what they're doing what clients they're working on what um, they get up to and that that influences you and sort of through osmosis you sort of soak up what they're up to and um, uh, I think that's important and that's um, a way that people start to balance out their creative their tech their their commercial acumen as a small agency it's very very difficult to really understand where people, um, where their careers may go. And I think we've worked hard and we continue to work hard in really just talking to people, understanding the challenges they're going to face, setting them targets and hopefully trying to offer them a, a path of some description that they feel like their career is, is progressing. It's hard in a small agency because there's only a finite number of roles and so often what you, where we tend to go is trying to find um, challenges in jobs in projects that they can take on more responsibility, they can learn more, they can um, uh, perhaps 
find themselves out of their comfort zones a little bit. But you've got to look at that all the time, and you've got to um, you've got to put in place structured reviews. You've got to listen to what people are doing. You've got to feed back well. And um, I don't think you'll ever, as a well, we as an agency will ever be perfect at it. But we've always got to work at it, and that I would say is a is a big big challenge. A number of years ago, we put together quite a, quite a structured review process. And uh, before we'd been a wee bit ad hoc, we, we always had annual reviews for everyone, but perhaps the notes weren't taken or they weren't put in files. So uh, you would return the year after and not have the reference to go back to. So we established a way of um, uh, reviewing within a structure. We keep that on file. Everyone who does reviews is taken through training so they know how to manage it, how to prepare for it, how to uh, be setting challenges for individuals and you, it's just improved everything so much more and I think everyone with, without question actually has commented on how much it's, um, it's helped their own development within the company at whatever stage they may be. There's many different ways I mean um, the number one is trying to get people into projects that um, they want to do so you know from a there's, there's, there's two questions there's two answers here actually there's the day job and ensuring that people are doing work they love and ensuring that the challenges are there. So you can start to think about how you get people involved in pitch processes, how you can introduce them to something they may not know, and then hopefully you win those, um, those pitches and you can go through to deliver that work. And I feel that um, anyone who's learning something new during those projects is, is motivated. They've got something that uh, is new, new to them. They've got a new string to their bow. They've gained a new experience. Then there's the stuff that um, is outside of work or outside of the project. So, um, you know, we always talk about extracurricular activities. Some of those are ones that are um, the projects that poke instigate um, that we'd like people to get involved with. So we're often doing things here with the council um, in the borough of Hackney and, and um, around Shoreditch, um, putting on events, um, getting people involved in that type of things is interesting. We've got people who have got their own projects they come to us with and uh, they want to find time to be able to pursue those projects and we can do that sometimes within work um, but there are a couple of people who are probably in a very special situation where they've come to us and said listen I have an idea that I want to pursue but it's going to really take a lot out of my time and so um, can we work out a way of achieving it and with those guys and in both cases they've been with us for some time we've set a very specific agreement with them where they work a four day week and so our head of the studio a um, guy called Mike has a, a, a passion for cycling and um, he's working a four day week now and, his, and on his fifth day he's learning to uh, build bikes so he's designing, he's, he's uh, producing and he's, I think he's made two or three of his own bikes now and it's just brilliant to see that passion um, develop but balanced with the work he's doing for Poke. Source LF are London's leading creative communications and media recruitment agency. Be sure to like our video and subscribe to this channel. Take the moment to watch another of our videos on screen now.